She sent me a picture of this nigga eating her coochie. You've been creeping and freaking and sneaking like you never lose me. Steady claiming that everyone know we together, but you steady choosing. Swear I cannot win for losing. I've been out here being faithful. I always got this on lockdown, but that ain't been keeping us stable. So I guess I know what I gotta do. Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching Miss Angelique TV. Where we talk about everything, you want to be everything. I mean, like, back for another story time. This next story time, as you can see by the title, is about the time I caught my ex eating coochie, okay? Before I get into the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below because you don't want to miss how I caught him eating coochie and then what I did in return and then what he did and retaliation. I got a lot of stuff to talk about, okay? <laughs> if you miss my other story times, you might want to go back really quick because a lot of this stuff that I'm getting ready to say, you might not really understand it because you didn't go to my last one or the one before that or the one before that. I got basically a whole series about this nigga called Ghost. That's his character name. So, let's begin. So, my last story time, I was um, talking about how, you know, I caught him talking to other bitches and stuff like that and he apologized and stuff. I stayed because I was stupid. Obviously, I've already made that very, very clear. I didn't want to be alone. And also, I just was so hard-headed that I felt like the things that we were dealing with just wasn't enough for me to not want to be with him yet. After he, like, gave me his social media passwords and stuff like that from the last time, which I talked about in my previous video, of me catching him texting different females, talking to people on Twitter and stuff like that. After that, I thought, okay, maybe he's gonna do right because, I mean, he gave me his password. Even though I'm not using it, I obviously know he's not doing anything because he knows that at any time I can access his Instagram or Twitter, right? One day, I realized he was doing this whole being in his phone constantly, texting, like, long paragraphs and stuff like that. And once again, wasn't saying anything to me about it. He seemed really, really agitated, but, like, I knew it didn't have anything to do with me because I was just sitting on the couch chilling. Um, I noticed he also had a password on his phone. Mind y'all, the last time I caught him talking to bitches, he didn't have a password on his phone. And then he gave me his social media passwords. But now all of a sudden, you got a lock on your phone? Okay, bitch. So now I gotta take out my handy dandy suitcase and notebooks and stuff like that because now I'm about to start investigating again. <laughs> so, what I did, after I noticed he had a code on his phone, I was sitting at an angle to where I can like see kind of what he was doing on his phone but i couldn't really but whenever you unlock the, your phone the numbers are obviously big enough for a person like sitting three feet away from you to see what you're putting in so you know what i did girl <laughs> girl i looked at that motherfucking keypad and i saw the code that he was putting in the four digit code mm -hmm. i saw it and i'm like okay bet i'm gonna keep that in my head because when this nigga go to sleep i'm going to dig <laughs> and that's exactly what i did i don't condone digging if you feel like you gotta investigate and dig then you don't need to be with him but i'm just telling y'all my story okay one night he went to sleep we were both asleep actually i don't know why i was up i can't really really remember why i was up but i heard his phone vibrate and he was asleep he was facing the other way his phone was actually underneath his pillow so i looked around it was dark as hell because i told you we were asleep or at least i was supposed to be asleep i looked around he was snoring i know he wasn't waking up no time soon i grabbed that motherfucker phone and typed in that same code that i visualized him putting in i saw that an unknown number also a 504 number text him and i'm gonna go ahead and show y'all the text messages because i <laughs> took a picture i started taking pictures of everything that i saw because he liked to fucking lie he liked to delete stuff and make like it never fucking happen if i ain't got no proof of it so i started getting my gathering my proof baby because you ain't gonna look me in my eyes and tell me i'm a liar when i know what i saw <laughs> i took a picture on my phone of what i saw and so, let me show y'all what I saw. This is where I started to catfish. <laughs> I know this is bad, and I don't recommend it, but I had, I was so tired of him going back to his ex because in the messages, he was talking back to his ex again. We didn't give his ex a nickname we gonna call her bite don't ask me why we call her bite bite was texting him and saying the stuff that she was saying and i can tell that he deleted if you can tell he deleted like the previous messages like you can see the whole thread obviously so i knew he had been texting her for i don't know how long mind y'all he told me in, in the last video as i told y'all he said he was gonna stop talking to her he was gonna block her you know that didn't happen which i should have known that wouldn't have happened so i took this girl number that same night i downloaded a texting app on my phone and i started to text her 
I started to text her as him. And I think I said something like, like my phone broke or some shit like that and I got a new phone or he got a new phone. And I started texting her in hopes of getting information and boy did I get some information. Just take a look. So as y'all can see, I got some tea. If you watched my video, he stole all my money. That was the video where I talked about how I gave him some of my, how I gave Ghost some of my tax money and how my grandfather had passed away and how he had went to New Orleans at the same time of me going to Arizona to bury my grandfather. The same time I was in Arizona burying my grandfather, he was in New Orleans fucking this bitch. Yep. He sure was, but that's not the end of it. The next morning, he was getting ready to go to work, and his phone started blowing the fuck up, like blowing up. And I think it was from a private number, if I'm not mistaken. But because I had all of a sudden stopped texting her from the texting app, she actually called. Whenever you call a texting app number, the voicemail is kind of different. So whenever I stopped texting her and she started calling, I'm sure she noticed the voicemail and noticed that it was not him. So which is why she started calling his other phone, his actual phone. And he was actually in the bathroom, and I guess she sent him a message or whatever, a text, and he came in the room, and he was like, why are you playing with this girl? And I already knew what he was talking about, but I just wanted to kind of drag it along as long as I could. <laughs> so he asked me again, why are you playing with this girl, texting her or whatever? I was like, why are you playing with me? Why are you out there in New Orleans fucking bitches while I'm out here bearing my grandfather? Like, what you mean why I'm playing with her? Why are you playing with me, my nigga? So we started arguing as he was getting ready to go um to go to work or whatever. And I told him, I was like, you can go ahead and be with her because obviously that's where you want to be. Obviously, from the text messages where I was texting her, she is madly in fucking love with her him for whatever odd reason and like you can have her like leave me be my nigga like I'm already halfway out the door I'm just finding a reason really at this point to stop fucking with you because I'm just hard-headed and I don't know I'm just hard-headed as fuck it sounds stupid but I'm just hard-headed so please leave me like leave like I'd rather you leave me than for me to have to leave you like I don't like leaving people that's probably another reason why I always stick around because I don't like being the one to leave a person and then I feel some type of way about it, I feel like guilty or something. I don't know, it's weird, it's stupid, I know, but I'm just letting you know how I used to be back then. So he ended up leaving work, leaving for work, and the girl actually, I think she DM'd me, but the girl had messaged me on Twitter and was like, you didn't have to, you know, act like him or whatever, you could have just kept it real and came to me. And I told her, you know what, you're right, you're right, but I knew he wasn't gonna tell me the truth, so I had to do what I had to do to get the truth, and that's what I did, so whatever my bad bitch i don't really give a fuck she started just running it down to me y'all she started running the shit down
She sent me a picture of this nigga eating her coochie. As y'all can see by the first picture, it's a date. Like on Snapchat, they had a filter where they showed the date. <laughs> and the date is the same day he was in New Orleans while I was in Arizona burying my, my grandfather. Like the same exact time. And then she ended up telling me how they didn't really break up until the beginning of January of 2017. I have been with him since the previous September so that means if that's the truth then this nigga was with her half of our fucking relationship and I knew nothing about it and then she also said that he had made it seem like he was living by himself out here in Houston how he was just you know getting his life together and how he was inviting her to come to his house which I don't understand how he would have done that because it was my apartment She also sent me the picture where it shows like the date and the location and the location was the same city or the same area that his mom lived in. And he was at his mom's house the entire time he was out there in New Orleans while I was in Arizona. <laughs> it was also his birthday as well. Me and him FaceTime one time while I, I was in Arizona and he was in New Orleans and we FaceTime around his birthday and I noticed there was a particular balloon in the background. I noticed how his background looked period. She sent me a video of her laying in the bed taking a video of him dancing with the same fucking balloon. Let me show y'all right now. Uh, how Dorito be? <laughs> Do it, babe. Hey, Do it, babe. Do it for the snap. Ooh. So not only was he fucking this girl, but he was actually fucking her in the same house as his mother, in which I thought me and his mama was cool. Come to find out later on down the line, his mama didn't know that um, the girl was at his at her house because she actually didn't like the girl because of all of the legal stuff that he'd been going through with her. She didn't really care for the girl anymore, but that's neither here nor there. I ended up texting him and I was like, did you fuck her? I had asked him something. Um, maybe I can pull a proof up, pull the text messages up. If I can, I'm gonna put it in right now. I had ended up sending him the picture of him and her in the bed together with the the snapchat date on it and he tried to make it seem like she photoshopped that and then he tried to make it seem like he thought that the girl photoshopped the picture of him eating her out with the location in it boy you can photoshop some shit but some shit you just don't photoshop and some shit you just know wasn't photoshopped and i'm, I'm a photoshop ass bitch like i know when a motherfucker photoshopped some shit whenever they didn't 
So I know it wasn't no fucking Photoshop, but he continued to lie, to say he didn't fucking sleep with this girl. He just kept fucking lying. That made me even more mad because like my nigga, you can just go ahead and tell me the truth. Like just tell me you was fucking with her, right? Like t let me know what it really is so we can move on and we can do whatever we gotta do. I can do whatever I feel like I gotta do, but you still fucking lying to me. It's, it's just gonna piss me off even more. And this is when it got kind of real um, and scary. He got home um, from work and he had told me to like stop talking to her and stuff like that he was like she don't know what she just trying to ruin, about, ruin our relationship because she wants me and this and that like you need to stop texting her and i was like okay i'm gonna stop texting her which i eventually did stop texting her but whenever he came home i continued to like ask him like did you fuck her like were you fucking her or what like let me know he just kept denying it like no i didn't no i didn't um, but I did see her. He admitted that he saw her, but he didn't fuck her. We got to arguing, and I'm the type, if I know you're lying, I'm gonna kind of pick at you until I find out the truth or until you admit to me the truth because I knew he was lying to me. And so, I can't really say I probably probably shouldn't have done this because it, at the end of the day, it was my house. Like, you disrespecting me. You out here fucking bitches, eating bitches pussy, and then coming back and kissing me. Like, what type of shit is that? At one point, he got so so mad. I don't even know why he was even mad to begin. Well, I do know why he was mad because he got caught up. Typical nigga, right? So, he got upset. So upset that he, I was standing up in the kitchen. Like, the way our house was made. It don't really matter how our house was made. But I was standing um, in front of the door. And I wouldn't, he kept telling me to leave him alone. And I'm like, no, what do you mean leave you alone? Like, I have uh, bitches texting me proof and shit of you eating a coochie and stuff when we supposed to be together. Like, you and you want me to leave you alone in my house? Like, nigga, no. So I kept talking. And so he came to me and literally put his, both of his hands around my neck and kind of gripped it a little bit, like, as if, as if he was getting ready to choke the shit out of me. But he didn't, and he said, please don't make me do this. And at this point, like, he put his hands on me before, obviously, because I've talked about it in previous videos, but he never put me in a fucking choke lock, whatever you want to call it, as if he was getting ready to choke me. I really became afraid at this point, and so I just, I just stopped. Like, I stopped talking about whatever I was talking about. I stopped going back and forth to him. I just stopped. After he said, please don't make me do this, I stopped. The way he gripped was as if he was getting ready to choke me, like I told y'all, but he didn't. And after I stopped, he let me go, and that was the end of that. A few minutes later, he ended up talking back to me about the same shit that he told me to leave him alone about. And so, I asked him again, I said, just tell me, did you fuck her? Did you, like, what, what really was it? Because, I mean, this, this is not a lie, this is not Photoshop. So, he finally admits, after getting so upset, getting ready damn near choke me because of something that he was lying about he told me yeah i did it i was at a weak spot in my life and i'm sorry i fucked up i'm a human being that's all you have to tell me bro like that's all you have to say he was a habitual liar y'all like i've never seen nobody to really just look at me in my face and lie to me about some shit that i have proof of like nigga the proof is right here i never mentioned this in like my other videos because like it really i didn't need to mention it until now but um whenever we got together he would he would always say like um how do you sign up for medicaid or how do you sign up for health insurance like i'm gonna get checked up i want to get checked up and whenever he said checked up like i obviously knew he meant like std wise which is cool like you know i commend everybody for wanting to get tested after i found out that he was fucking this girl <laughs> I realized that maybe the reason why he wanted to get tested is because he's been fucking other females behind my back. It's crazy now that I think about it. It all started making sense to me. I knew I was good. It's never a bad thing to want to get checked even if you know you good, regardless. So I, I didn't have a problem with it. And I also had times where I had to go to the doctor and he asked me, was I good? And I told him like, yeah, like I was good. And he wanted to even see the records. I had went to the hospital for something and they ended up doing like a well woman check on me and everything in the hospital. but. I I couldn't access the account like my my profile or whatever to look at my medical records for, because I had changed my number and so he like begged me for the longest for it whenever I was finally able to, to get it he was like okay cool but I, I, I really didn't understand why he was so pressed like he even started thinking I was lying about having an STD just because he wasn't looking at the, the proof like my nigga why would I have to lie to you about something because if I had an STD that means you got it and if I get get it cured without telling you and i'm still fucking you that means i'm gonna get it again so that doesn't even make sense i mean i guess i can't say i forgave him for it 
let me just keep it real but it's it's kind of more of like i brushed the situation under the rug um i and he told me once again i'm gonna block her i'm gonna stop talking to her and she just want to break out break about relationship and stuff he was just like i made a mistake i'm sorry yeah i cheated on you i'm just so sorry and all this other type of stuff two days later or so i ended up making us an appointment because he actually was on my health insurance y'all like a dumbass i put him on my health insurance so we both had insurance and i had made us both appointments to go get treated for everything like we were tested for everything front back top and bottom it came back clear thank god in the beginning i wasn't that nervous because i, I you know i knew i was okay because i had got checked up before i even got with him and stuff like that but whenever i found out that he actually was cheating on me then i started to get afraid because i knew how pressed he was about checkup and stuff like this and i wasn't even that pressed about it because i knew i was okay but whenever i started finding out he was fucking people and nine times out of ten he was fucking other people that i just didn't know about but i know for a fact that he was fucking his ex and there was a lot of times where he would go to the gym and go do this with his partners and stuff like that and it would seem suspect to me but i wouldn't really say anything so i'm sure a lot of those times he told me he was somewhere but he really wasn't he was out there fucking the bitch too thank god i didn't catch no fucking disease because i've been there and done that if y'all been following me for a while i've been with a nigga who cheated on me and gave me a fucking std and i was pregnant like if you want to cheat leave the person that you with just fyi if you want to cheat do your dirt cool boo cheat do your thing don't go back and fuck the same girl or the same nigga like you might as well just cut all ties and do what you gotta do because if you supposedly care about this person you out here fucking everybody tom dick and harry and jen and jan and pam and sam like you don't know what type of std you could get like there's millions <laughs> Millions of people out here who don't know who have STDs but do. We got tested and about seven days later the results came back and we were actually able to view the results online. I was able to, um, to review my results and he was able to review his. And like I said, it came back clear. Thank God. But it doesn't end there. <laughs> I'm getting ready to wrap the story up but it does not end there. Um, because about a week and a half later, I get a text message of an ultrasound and after that happened that's when a lot of things got real and i say this a lot like oh it gets real it got real this and that i say that a lot in these videos because stuff really was getting real i think i have maybe two or three more story times to talk about whenever it it comes to ghosts these last few story times i don't even think i'm ready to talk about it but i have to close that chapter um, and discuss what happened um, you know why the fuck am I about to cry I'm not even talking about it yet I went through a lot of stuff with him before like I'm talking to I'm talking about it right now like that's a lot of stuff to, to deal with right um, but these next few things that I'm going to talk about that I dealt with regarding him were the hardest thing that I've ever dealt with and I'm going to just say it like this I'm happy to be alive right now so that's that. I was on the floor and I kept it in that same exact spot. Like I didn't even remove it because like I wanted to make it look like ain't nobody touched his phone, okay? Even though whenever he got the message I opened it up. But his he's so fucking dumb. He smoked weed all day that he wouldn't even notice that he had an unread message that was read, but he didn't fucking read it. Or the message that was sent to